Hello, 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 hello. Wherever you happen to be located on this breathtaking planet, we little humans call Earth. I hope you are having a soothing day, even or night, wherever you happen to be located. Welcome into one of the world's top 3D applications. And it's free. That's the beauty of it. It's free and it's very professional. I have a little bit of flaws, some little bugs, but I guess every major program has flaws in it. Today, I'm going to be talking about using the compositor. An another one of my chapters talking about the using the compositors. I know when you are a Blender beginner or even any 3D beginner, when it comes to using those nodes with a compositor, it usually turns us off because the compositor is like a, a, a recipe. A lot of people don't like cooking, so they may not like the compositor because it has different res recipes. A little bit of this, a little bit of that, and a little bit of this, and a little bit of that, and you got something fantastic. It looks wonderful, but a lot of people don't like to go through the effort. And but the good thing about the compositor, you don't have to use the compositor. You don't have to. The thing I like about the compositor, it does add a little bit more pizzazz or life to whatever model you have uh, created. So the main thing is you got a model. All right, so let me go into the compositor now. Let me click on it. I clicked on it. Let me set up my screen. I like to have that view editor here. Editors, um, I'm sorry, the image editor. And let me go back to the layout. Did I choose my Yes, I chose my screen. I, I chose what I wanted. So I can go back to the compositor. Let me hit render to see if anything has show up. Render, render image. Let's see. I want to choose a viewer node. Let's see what happened. We have to wait a couple seconds. Do I have to wait? Or maybe I have to do this again. Render image. Oh, I'm sorry. I chose render animation. Sorry about that. Let me see. Render. Render image. I hope it worked. Nothing. Render result. Okay, there it is. Let me zoom out. I don't like how black it look. I should have put some stars there, but hey. Let me go back to my the world view. Click on this. I'm gonna change the color a little bit. Just a nudge. Let me see if it updates itself. Now I wanna use use nodes. And my topic for the day, I'm gonna be using those filter nodes. And I want to use the one called Filter Bilateral Blur. Now, before I use the Bilateral Blur, let me see if it's updating. It still don't show my gray background. Alright, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add a viewer node and see what that will do. I think the viewer node is a little bit faster. Add Output Viewer Node. I'll put it right here. Now we'll connect it. Let's see what happened. While it's setting up. Oh, I have to hit the V key. Hit the V. So on real node, to zoom out, to zoom into your image, you have to hit V. And then, um, to make it large again, let me see. It's Alt V. So V, you can zoom in. Alt V. You can zoom out. Let me render this one more time and see what happened. I want I don't want the background to be so dark looking. Okay, looks better here. Okay, that's what I want. Let me hit the N key. It didn't fully update on this ruin though, did it? Let me disconnect it and see what happened. Let me reconnect it again.
Okay, looks about a little bit better. Before I start going over this, I can zoom right into this because the only node I'm, I need to use right now, the bilateral node. Let me go into the exact Blender website and see what it says about this bilateral node. I've been toying around with it. All right, it's bringing it up. The bilateral node. The bilateral blur node performs a high quality adaptive blur. Okay, so a high quality adaptive blur on the source image, allowing to blur images while retaining their sharp edges. Okay, let me see. Let me go back. We see some sharp edges, so let's see if it retains that. But let me keep reading some more. It can be used for various purposes like smoothing noisy render passes to avoid larger computation times. So, okay, so it can help smooth up your, um, your renders, which I have discovered. Times an example, ray trace, ambient occlusion, blurry reflection, reflections, soft shadows, or to make non-photorealistic -photo compositing effects. Now, it has an input. It has Here's the input values. Image. Right where I had my mouse at. Here's the image. Let me open this up some more. Here's the image input. What does it say about that? Standard image. Okay, so as you see, my image is from my, uh, my, um, my mesh. If only the image input is connected, the node blurs the image depending on the edges presented in the source. So it's based on these edges right here on my little lamp right here. We're going to see if it's truly leaving the edges. The determinator, where my mouse is, the second yellow input value. What does it say about the uh, determinator? Which is non arbitrary so we don't have to use that. That's good. And if the determinator is connected, it serves as the source for defining edges, borders for the blurred image. This has great advantage and case the source image is too noisy okay so you use it if it's too noisy but normals in combination with z buffer can still define exact border edges of objects so for my for my little reading of it there's bilateral blur it tries to maintain those edges but i'm gonna still i'm gonna hook up to the um i'm not gonna use the determinator yet so here's the first test. So even though I have it on the viewer node, we can look onto my image to the left. All right, I'm going to increase it by five, the iterations. Let's see what happens. I can put it a little bit slow. So I'm still waiting to see if anything happened with five. My computer, it's an i7. Okay, it blurred it a little bit. And the thing I do like about the... um. This bilateral blur, it makes my little light sources stand out some more. I'm going to bring it down to two and see what happened. Then I'm going to take up to higher values. Wait, I should leave it here. Let me read about what this color sigma does. Let me go back to the blender page. Color sigma defines a threshold for which color differences in the image should be taken as edges. Okay, so it's saying... Taking the colors as ed edges. Space Sigma. A fine-tuning variable for blur radius. Okay, so we're going to see how well these work. Alright, my color Sigma. Right now is at 3 temps. I'm going to put it to uh, 7 temps. And see what happens. I'll give it about 10 seconds. I hope it works. I said I have a slow... I think I have a first or third generation i7. All right, I haven't seen nothing happen yet. So I'm going to put it back to three temps. Or if it happens, it's very subtle. All right, space sigma. Right now it's on five. I'm going to double it to make it ten. Let's see what happens. I got it to ten. We may have to wait a little while. I'm going to give it about 30 or 20 seconds. Let's see what happens. Now, it probably works better on my faster computer, but on, when I'm recording, 
I just used my, my old i7. Okay, it did make a change. I still see my edges. I see the edges for my rocks and the lamps. So it so when I double the space sigma, it changes a little bit. I'm going to take it down to something like 1. Let's see what happened. The value of 1. Can it go that low? Okay, it looks real sharp. Now, I'm going to change the iterations to a higher number. I'm going to change my iterations to 10. Let's see what happened. I don't see no effect happening. What happened? Let me put it back to one. Let me see if it happened if I put it. Oh. So my image got blurred again. It got blurred. What happened if I put sigma to zero? Can it go that low? My sigma is to zero. Oh. But my render layer is showing nothing here. And it can never really be zero. It could be. Okay, it's changed. Now my render layer has changed, but my image hasn't changed much. Alright, I'm gonna take my uh my iterations back to one. Let's see what happened. Okay, it's back to its original state. Let me go up to 30. Let's wait a couple seconds. So I think the higher the number. The more intensive it may be on the computer, because when I put it to five, it made a it made a change within a couple of seconds. Thirty. Okay, I saw something happen in my oh, right here in my viewer port, it did change. It looks real blurry in my viewer point, but I still see the edges. The edge, yeah, the edges are still there. The outer edges, the outer edges, they just look a little bit blurry, but they still there. But this this hasn't changed. And so let me go back over here to my 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 viewer. I'm gonna choose this. Okay, it's see it's changed it. My, my render results showing an exact one, but I'm gonna I'm gonna put it on viewer node. All right, so let me see if I can see my edges if I drop it back down to one. Too bad I, I I'm not using my. Uh, let me see. Can I use my um? I'm using my annotate tool. Can I write on here? Yes, I can. No, it's not writing on here. Let me see why it's not. It's on annotate. Okay, so it may not work too well in this uh, composite. I have to check that out. All right, but I do see my edge right here. I'm going to take it back down to one and see if I still see that edge. One. Okay, yes, the edge was still there. It just got blurry, but the edge was there. So from what we gather from this uh, bilateral blur, it tried to maintain the edges, but it does blur the images. And I'm going to take it to a low number because I want to say something about this before I go. I got it on 20, so you know it's going to take a little bit of time. What I do like, see, it makes my light. It highlights my, my lights a little bit more. Let me take it down to a simpler value such as 3. Let's see how it affects my my lights. See, it is illuminate my lights a little bit more. Let me take it to 1. Yeah, see my... So, keep that in mind. This bilateral blur, if you put it to a number 5 or less, and you have a light source, it will... I mean, it will emphasize that light source. So, that's it, my good people. Until the next time, until the next time I'm motivated to make a video on Blender, which I love. Peace.